Tech alert. All right, guys, there it is. The USS Discovery model kit by Polar Lights in one 2500th scale. And I, I just got this model. I'm very excited about it. I want to shoot a video right away to kind of show you guys this kit and show you why I'm so excited about it. Um, I haven't looked much at the instructions. This is kind of the first time I'm taking a look at the kit and its decals and its parts. Uh, but already there's some things that have me so excited. I want to kind of just shoot this video right away so that you guys can see what we're looking at along with me. Um, as we do this build, we're going to do most of it right here on YouTube. So we would love it if you would like this video and subscribe to follow along with the build. Um, so let's start right off. This is the box art. So like most of the unified box art we're seeing this year, we get a nice hero sh shot right on the cover. Uh, this time we don't get a captain, we get Michael Burnham. Um, Discovery kind of changes out the captain every season, it seems, and this really is our series lead. But when, when, they, uh, when they give us a fun little quote, they are giving us one by Gabriel Lorca. Blink, you're in a lorry. Blink, the moons of Andoria. Blink, you missed Romulus. All those planets, all those places, all those species seen and yet to be seen. Captain Gabriel Lorca. Uh, I, I love that they put little quotes from the captain on there. Well, it might have been a little more appropriate to give us a quote by Michael. Um, here is kind of an undershot of the ship. Following the box along, we get another kind of reverse angle, USS Discovery. We get a shot about the decals, and the decals are a pretty exciting part of the ship. Uh, when we get to the decals, we'll see those in detail. comes with a base with a ball joint. Another shot of the ship. Now the bottom of the box, we get 28 parts, molded in color, full color paint guide, USS Discovery NCC 1031 Crossfield class starship. And along the box, we do get our decal guides and our paint guide. So check out this channel. There are two videos that we've posted in the past couple days about what paints we're using. We really are right in line with what Polar Lights is suggesting light gold, silver, bronze. Um, it's a good looking ship. Check out those other two videos. I think we found the paint colors we're going to use on this build. And they're right in line along the lines of what round two is suggesting. Now I know you guys all want to start seeing the parts. And we'll look at the parts a little bit more tomorrow. Um, when we start taking things off the sprue and start seeing how it goes together. Uh, but I want to make sure you guys saw some of the parts tonight. So starting off, not the dome base that we've been getting on a lot of the round two kits. We get kind of a specific one here uh, with a ball joint. Kind of a very elegant looking little base. Next, we have... The nacelles. They are long on this ship. So we get two nacelles, very nice and long, and the spine to kind of go up that hole to the saucer sections. Our next two sprues are really the main parts of the ship. So we get the saucer halves, the hull halves, a few extra little parts. Look at that detail on that bridge dome. Now let's try and get an angle that really shows the color. I think that is a fair representation of the color plastic that this is molded in. Um, 
in some of these videos it may start looking a little more brown um, great detail but I, I think that is a fair representation of what color it actually is now the next part sprue is the one that has me really excited um, I did not know we were getting this but clear parts um, so clear parts on a 125th Trek ship um, and look at this so we get a little dome that will go under that bridge we get these long clear parts that are going to go in the nacelle on the ship those glow blue so on the inside of the nacelles uh, looks like that clear part is going to fit right in there and then we have those are the fronts of the nacelles okay so so clear parts um, I'm not sure if I'm quite daring enough to do it but you really could just stick a three millimeter LED shining out through this clear part and a three millimeter LED shining back here and you'll light that blue strip you'll light that red uh, front of the nacelle and it 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 might not be crazy to try and light this ship um, I was I was not expecting clear parts on this ship I wasn't expecting to light this at all I I'm still not sure if I am uh, but yeah they're giving you clear parts for the front for that glowing blue line along the back and that's enough room for some LEDs if you're if you're good at working LEDs into small places that's not bad that is all right we're gonna have to look at it tomorrow when I get some of these parts off the sprue whether or not there's actually room in there um, to stick some LEDs it wouldn't take much it would just need a couple red LEDs to shine back here for these lights and maybe let me see that, that do we have okay we have a clear deflector housing um, looks like that clear deflector housing would fit right in there so that wouldn't be hard at all to, to put a to put a blue deflector dish LED shining right here um, looks like we have clear parts um, yeah that is a clear part to give us that lit line um, right here on the ship I think that yeah I'm gonna have to figure out where that goes yeah I, I think they give you a clear part to to light these white strips right in front of the ship and you're gonna have some engines to go along the back so we're just gonna have to see if there's any room to actually shine an LED onto this clear part and onto the clear parts back here if, if there's enough room we might do that yeah that that's that's exciting um, then you know there's even a chance you could put a little LED right here and light up that bridge dome um, yeah that, that that was that's exciting I'm I'm very excited about those clear parts and kind of some of the room they're giving into you look here's a uh, the shuttle bay door I don't think we've seen the shuttle bay closed in season two if, if you watch the show they're flying around the entire time with an open shuttle bay uh, but those are the plastic sprues um, if you can't tell I'm excited about those clear parts um, I don't know if I'm gonna light it but somebody is the next part that is so exciting and like I said I had to shoot this video right away uh, I was so excited about those clear parts and I was so excited about these decals I, I know it's really silly uh, but I love 
that you're getting the ISS decal. So you could just cut that USS off, stick the ISS on, and you can have your mirror universe discovery. But look at these decals. So of course we've got the Aztec decals. And I don't think the video is going to do it justice. They look brown in the video. These are actually really gorgeous metallic decals. Uh, take a look at this stripe right here. That's gorgeous. Um, look at the decal, detail on these decals. If you don't want to be the Discovery, you can also make it the USS Glenn NCC 1030. So you get two decal sheets like that to kind of cover the ship. And I, I really want you guys to be able to see the detail on these Aztec decals. I think this part must be for the nacelles. But if we get in there, look at that detail. That is some gorgeous nacelle Aztecs. Look at that. These things are just going to be gorgeous. It's really begging you just to paint it one solid color and really let those decals do the work. You know, people are going to be able to get real close to your model and just be amazed at the decal, detail on that. See so yeah, how overall, obviously we've got to get the kit put together uh, before we really can make any judgments. Um, but yeah, I am excited, guys. I, I love, I love those decals. I love the clear parts. Um, I'm excited to kind of see how it all fits together. I'm excited for you guys to follow the build. Um, you know, it, it really seems that round two um, is putting together some pretty good kits these days. Um, so starting tomorrow, we will start taking some parts off the sprues, um, gain an idea of what we can actually do on this build, seeing how well things fit together. All right, guys, as promised, kind of working on the discovery here. We've taken a lot of the parts off the sprues and it's time to kind of see how they fit together. So for a small scale ship, uh, it really does have a lot of parts, 28 parts in total, and um, a lot of good detail. Uh, we'll talk a lot about the detail being in scale. That means they haven't done things like putting windows on the ship. Uh, you just can't kind of put that much detail on, on a, a ship like this. But you'll see a lot of the hull plating, a lot of great detail there. So here's our sub-assembly for the engineering hull. All right, so the way this starts going together is along the bottom hole, you start putting in some of the clear pieces. So you have some clear pieces for the lit stripes along the front of the ship that go in just like this. And then the deflector housing pushes in from the front. Okay, there's the deflector, there are the clear lit strips. After that, it's time to join the two halves together. All right, all of that goes together very easily. Now, I, ha I have actually um, opened up some of these holes because it is a snap kit. If you want to be able to do some dry fitting, um, you could use just a small drill bit uh, to kind of widen these holes so you can put it together and take it apart with ease. I'm going to be gluing this kit together, um, so I definitely want to kind of open that up. Now, once you've done that, it's time to fill in these gaps along the back. So the first thing you do is grab your side piece, and you're going to put another clear part for the engines right in there. Now 
Now that is going to go along the back, just like that. And you can do it again on the other side. Of course, those are going to fall off since I've opened them up, so it's no longer really a snap kit for me. All right, there we've got both of the sides in. After that, your shuttle bay door comes in and fits right across the back there. Now, part of the snap kit is that it has a little bit of a lip right here. That's actually going to snap underneath uh, that part of it to kind of snap it all together. Um, so since I've, I've taken those snap posts out of mine, um, I will have to kind of glue it to get it to, to fit. All right, so that's what your back is going to look like. So quite a bit there. Um, five parts to close up the back there. Yep. All right, three parts along the front. After that, you have kind of the spine of the ship. It will go right across the top. All right, of course, parts are falling off there because, like I said, I've opened up the hole so it's no longer really a snap kit. All right, so that's what we're going to be looking at. All right, so that is the first sub-assembly kind of setup. All right, our next sub-assembly is the saucer section. Uh, so kind of the control sphere, the bridge sphere, comes in two different parts, and each of those have clear parts that go inside them. So we have a small clear part. It's just going to fit right along the bottom. For this, just for this part, I'm going to leave those parts out. But on the top of the dome, we have another clear part as well that'll sit under all that. Once you've put in those clear parts, you just join the top and the bottom. Just like that. Then you're going to put that on your saucer top. To that, the bottom saucer. You can see they do have the phaser bumps put in. Some of the other edge de detailing is on there. The control dome is done very nicely. And after that, it's a simple matter of just hooking these two together. Right there, you can see a little bit of a seam where those two parts of the neck join together. But really not too bad. The saucer fits together very nicely. All right, the last major sub-assembly is the nacelle, which has a clear front part for the Bassard collector and a long clear part kind of for the warp engine glow. And these go together pretty simply. The clear part simply gets sandwiched between the two other halves. Just like that. And this clear part will sit right along the front here. Just like that. You just close it up by putting the bottom on there. All right, so that's our completed nacelle. Clear part in front, clear part along the side. And you'll notice there's a gap right here. Let's see if you can see that. And inside this gap are actually two different posts. Um, this you're going to push inside of that 
and it's going to catch on to those. All right, there we go. We've got things held together a little bit better with the help of a little bit of tape there. I, I hope this video has been useful to you guys. I, I hope that you enjoyed kind of seeing how the parts are going to fit together, kind of how the parts have been broken down for this model kit. And I do want to, before we go, make sure you guys can see some of the detail on the ship. I, I think the detail is well done. There's no way to put windows on a model um, this size. If you tried to put the windows in, um, they would really be out of scale with what we're looking at. Uh, so let's, let's get some good looks at this ship here. Now you will see there are some swirls from the colored plastic. Um, I'm going to be painting it, so not a big deal at all. That actually fits together very well once I kind of hold it together there. So if you're snapping in place, that'll look good. The whole plating, very nicely done. Now there is some detail there. Take a look at kind of the detail along that nacelle. I think that's very well done. Try and get a shot of the Bassard collector there. Can't wait to get some paint on that. Good panel lines. Very nicely done. All right, guys. In this video, we're going to look at putting in LEDs into our USS Discovery model kit by Polar Lights. So when I first got the kit and saw the clear parts, I was very interested in seeing if I could put in some LEDs. And the more I looked at it, uh, the more reasonable it seemed. So if you look at the nacelles, you'd want one LED shining forward um, to kind of light up the front of it, and one shining back on that big, long, clear plastic part. And as I looked at it, if you took a three millimeter LED, there's definitely enough room in there for a forward-facing one and a rear-facing one. As I looked at the main body of the ship, there's a lot of room in there. Easily to have one facing forward and have a few facing back at the impulse engines. So the next thought was with the impulse engines kind of being off to the side here, would there be enough room for it to kind of show through? If we kind of look There is enough room there. That's a big enough gap to kind of get some light shining through. So I decided I did want to light it. Now, the, the way I do my lighting is very simple and very inexpensive. Uh, what I'm going to kind of show you today and what I'm putting in the discovery kit. Um, I only spent about $7 buying some new LEDs. I had wire left over from my runabout project. I have a soldering iron and heat shrink tubing from old projects. And as you get into do, do it, as you get into do-it-yourself lighting, you'll find that buying something like a spool of wire costs five or six bucks and lasts you through quite a few projects. So here's what I'm going to do on the Discovery. I'm going to use a nine-volt battery and just a oh, nine volt leads here. All my LEDs are actually pre-wired for 12 volts, but 12 volt LEDs will run on nine volts. They just won't be quite as bright. And for this kit, that's gonna be good. I don't need huge spotlights. I don't need it to light up a room. I don't need it to look like a flashlight. I just need it to light up 
a little bit. So 9 volt battery, a 9 volt lead, and some pre-wired LEDs. And these pre-wired LEDs, I bought about 20 of them for about $7. They're color coded, so we've got a black wire and a red wire. And as long as you match those up with the leads coming off your 9 volt battery, you're fine. Okay, so there we go. That is an LED wired to a 9 volt battery. Now we want more than one LED and what I'm going to do here, this is a real basic parallel circuit. Um, a parallel circuit means that all of these LEDs are going to be connected to the power source directly. So you really can do something as simple as connecting all three of these LEDs to your one terminal. You know, don't let anybody scare you away from working on electronics yourself. It, it absolutely is something that you can do and, and you really can't do anything simpler than this. Now once you have them all connected, you do want to put a little bit of solder on there to hold them all together. So you just use your soldering iron, touch the wires, and touch your solder, not to the soldering iron, but to the wires. There you go. So now we have those soldered together. Uh, you don't want to leave those ends uninsulated, so you can use a little bit of heat shrink tubing. Heat shrink tubing is very easy to use. You just want to cut yourself and have a smaller diameter piece that can fit over your wires. Slip it over. Then you can use a heat gun or even a hair dryer just to shrink it. All right, so right there, that is a simple set of three LEDs connected to a power source. Five minute job. And once again, cheap. So you don't need to do much to put lights inside of a ship. So using that basic idea, I'm going to show you what I've worked out for the USS Discovery. So these are the LEDs I've wired up to use in the USS Discovery. And it's just as simple as what I just showed you with those three LEDs I've done together. So we start with one line from our power source coming right in here. We separate the red to one side, the black to one side, and then we take four LEDs just like we did in that little experiment, strip down their ends, wire all the reds together, wire all the blacks together. So that's going to be our two red lights for the back impulse engines, the blue light to shine forward on the deflector, and this light is going to run up the spine of the ship into the bridge dome. Uh, the other thing that we need is we need LEDs for the warp nacelles. So like I said, I wanted one to go forward, one to go backwards. So I have right here two LEDs that I've soldered together. Um, just like I did those, I just cut the leads very, sh very short. And on this, to run through the ship, I actually used 
magnet wire. So this is a very, very thin gauge, uh, 30 gauge, that's thin enough that you can kind of fit between some parts. Then all I did was I used clear blue paint on the warp nacelle ones on the deflector, clear red paint on the impulse engine, and I left the one for the bridge dome just kind of clear white. All right, when I connect it to my nine volt battery, that's what I have. Eight working LEDs to power up the USS Discovery. We'll see in a little bit how to actually fit this into the ship, uh, but the actual electrical work, not very difficult at all. Just mostly joining together all the reds, all the blacks, soldering them together, and then making sure they're insulated by heat shrink tubing over those exposed parts. So now that we've got the electrical sorted, it's time to actually working on the kit and making sure it's ready to be lit. So the first thing we did is paint the clear parts. So the lit strips on the front, we could just paint all that blue. The engines, we can paint red. That long strip in the nacelle, we can just paint that blue. Now, the Bassard collectors at the front of the nacelle and the deflector dish, a little bit different story. So you really only want those three spots to be lit up. You want the rest to be your main hull color. So first thing we did was we paint the entire thing clear blue and masked off the back because we want the light to be able to shine through it. Then masked off those three little dots and sprayed the entire thing black, silver, and finally our hull color gold. So now when we put an LED behind it, hopefully we'll just get light through those three parts. The deflector clear piece is about the same. We start by spraying the entire thing blue, then masking off the back so that the light can shine through. Then we masked just that center circle for the deflector dish. The rest of it, after it was masked, we painted black, we painted silver, and finally we did gold, leaving just that middle part to glow blue. After that, it was time to start modifying the solid pieces that we needed to modify. So even though there's a lot of room inside the nacelles, there were a couple locator posts here and here that I had to clip out. And that was very easy. Just used my snippers to snip those, come at them from the other side, snip them again. I think there's one right here. Just snipped those, then I used some uh, rough sandpaper to get rid of any of the nubs, just to give myself a lot of room there. I still have locator pins all the way down the back, but now I've got room to put in my nacelles. Or, I'm sorry, my lights into my nacelles. On the main hull, there was once again a locator pin right here behind the deflector. I came in with my snips, snipped that off so that I had lots of room for that LED to shine out. And then even though I'm using magnet wire, I have to make sure I've got plenty of room for those wires to run through. So I took a very small drill bit, drilled right in between these two panels. And then I used a jeweler's file to really file myself down a trench for those wires to run in. So just filed a couple lines for the wires to run in. One of the last modifications I had to do is on this, uh, this is a solid part. So I had to drill a series of holes down through, then use my jeweler's file to file that out. 
That way we'll have an open back for light to shine through for those red clear parts. The final modification I had to make to the kit was to the spine. I had to give myself, I had to give myself an opening for an LED to come up the spine and into the saucer. So starting underneath, I took a drill bit and this hole runs about like that throughout. It comes up through the wall and through the top. Not sure how well you can see that. Yeah, just used a drill bit to drill through those and coming up the top. Now there's plenty of room between these two pieces. For that LED to get to that dome. But kind of the scary cut is I had to cut the saucer. So you can see I cut a gap right there in the saucer. that wire to run through. And that gap will not be seen because it is covered up on top by this piece and on bottom by the spine. And you can see right there, there's my LED poking out to light up that dome. So a pretty easy cut, it gets completely covered up, but that's kind of the biggest modification to be able to run a light into that dome. That's all the physical modifications I made to the kit, but of course if you're lighting it, um, you do have to light block it so the LEDs don't shine through the hull. So all of these surfaces where there's going to be LEDs inside, I airbrushed it glossy black, made sure light wasn't really shining through. Then I did this silver color to reflect light throughout. So all the exposed parts there got a coat of black and then a coat of silver to make them light blocked. So that's all the prep work that went into putting the lights in. Building the LEDs, wiring them up, modifying the kit, and what we're going to do next is start gluing those LEDs into the kit. All right, so I'm taking my lighting setup, the wires that are going to connect to the power source, I'm feeding through those through the bottom. Now we're starting to get an idea of how it'll be. Blue light going forward, two red lights going back, clear light going up into the top of the ship, and these, for the warp nacelle, we're going to start gluing in just like that to the nacelles. All right, we're going to super glue those parts into the nacelle, and we'll check back after that is dried. All right, so now we have super glued in those LEDs into the nacelles and we've used modeling glue to close the nacelles up. After that, uh, we did some super glue right here to hold that magnet wire into the trench we made for it. A little bit of super glue to hold the blue LED pointed right in the right direction up front. So what we're gonna do next is take the LED that's gonna go all the way up to the bridge, feed it through a hole we made in the top of the engineering hole. And what I'm going to do next is just traditional modeling glue to close all of this up, then attach the nacelles to that part, and then we'll see where we are. All right, we've glued on the nacelles, we've glued the engineering hole together. Now it's time to take care of this last LED. That's going to start by going up the spine of the ship. Now 
now we're going to put this part of the saucer down. The final part will just be to cap it with this. All right. I'm gonna go glue all those parts together and when I'm back we should get to see the lights in action for the first time okay guys we have everything glued together everything fits we're gonna see how well it works uh, we're gonna start off looking at the back I have not glued in these red pieces I'm going to want to be able to take those off again uh, while I paint the ship let's turn on the lights all right, so we have the blue engines glowing. We've got the red impulse engines glowing. Okay, I'm gonna take off those red lenses. Set those aside for a minute. All right, there's our side view. Lit my cells, lit strips by the deflector. All right, how's that look? Got the deflector lit. Got the lower bridge dome lit. We've got the facade collectors lit. There's the bridge dome. So I, I wouldn't say it's terribly easy to do, but it can be done. A little bit of pre-planning, a little bit of looking at how the parts go together. And yeah, you do have to modify it a bit, but there is room in there to put in some lights. Okay, now before I can actually paint this, I did find a few places where I think I need to use a little bit of putty. And this is the first part right here, right along that line. Now, this part I'm actually fine with, that's just a panel line. But right here we do have a bigger gap than I'd like. Um, and on the inside as well, right in there. So I think we're just gonna need a little bit of putty to kind of get that looking a little better. All right, guys, we are now firmly in the painting phase for this ship. So let's look at what round two Polar Lights suggests we use for this kit. So we start off with a base coat of light gold, then we use silver and bronze for the accents. Then the clear parts, we're doing a, some in clear blue, some in clear red. Now I, I really think on this kit, uh, it really benefits from pre-painting a lot of it before you put it together. Especially when we look at something like this clear blue strip going across the back. Uh, that's not really something you're going to want to mask off and paint later. Um, so what I did is I painted, I airbrushed the back half of the top part, the back half of the bottom part uh, with my gold color, did the clear part in clear blue, and then I sandwiched them all together. I didn't do any glue kind of here on the outside. I put a tiny drop of super glue on all the snap posts inside and put it together. Uh, but that really saved me from um, having to mask off that blue stripe. I stopped my airbrushing right about here so that I would have a clean gluing surface to use Tamiya cement uh, right there. And then um, I just airbrushed the front half so that I could airbrush over like this section um, after it was glued together. Uh, but definitely pre-painting this worked pretty well. You could pre-paint the entire nacelle halves and then snap it together and have a, a good crisp line there for the blue clear part. Um, also on the back, um, I did not want to mask off those red parts, so I left those off until I painted it. And then just tiny drops of super glue to hold on to those red parts. The other thing I feel really benefits from pre-painting I pre-painted this sphere. Uh, so I painted the top half, painted the bottom half, 
That way when I put it together, I didn't have to worry about masking off those clear windows. Same thing on the bottom there. Uh, painted the actual sphere in kind of the bronze color. Um, so I wouldn't have to worry about that window. Now what I'm going to do next is I have to continue this bronze color down the spine. So I'll mask off uh, the spine so it's by itself. Uh, spray bronze on it. And then the silver accents really should be these stripes. Uh, but those are actually also reflected on a decal. So I'm not sure if I will do the silver. Maybe I'll just let the decal do that. And it looks like you do some bronze around the shuttle bay entrance here. Um, so that's what we're doing next. And for my actual paint colors, so they suggest light gold. Um, so the Tamiya acrylic that I found was closest was Titan gold. And on my kind of test experiment ship, this is Titan gold all by itself. You can't compare it to my final color here. I think the Titan gold would look okay, especially under the decals, uh, but I wanted it to be a little bit darker of a gold, so I mixed it with copper. Actually, I, I made two mixes like this. Um, just kind of one heavier on the gold, one heavier on the copper, and kind of that's what I'm using. I hope you can see a difference there. This one is more gold, and this one is more copper. Um, and the one that's more copper, that's what I'm using for the bronze color on that sphere. So there you go. Both of these colors are a mix of Titan gold and copper. This one is just more gold. This one is more copper. Um, I'm going to mask those off and we'll be back after we've painted the spine. All right, we might be a little overboard with the masking, um, but on a model like this, that's kind of small, it's easy enough that when you're aiming the airbrush here to hit a lot of things back here. Um, or if you're trying to kind of be underneath and hit this, it's easy to to kind of overspray on a smaller model. Uh, so better safe than sorry, use a little bit extra masking tape and mask things off well. All right, now we have the spine unmasked. I kind of see the, the difference in the paint colors there. Yeah, it's a good angle to see the difference there. Right, we'll touch up some of the gold paint uh, make sure uh, we get a second coat on there. Uh, but very soon we're going to be on to decals for this ship. All right, so now we are getting ready to put on the decals. So we have all the supplies we need. We have gloss coat. Uh, to get the model a good glossy finish. Uh, we've already done that step. We have, of course, our decals, our water, we have some good tweezers, and we have microsol to kind of melt the decals onto the ship. So we're gonna take a moment, we're gonna cut out the decals and see what they look like. All right, here are our first three decals. Good close look here. So I'm very interested in what these look like. I'm sure most of this white part is probably translucent, um, but you can see here there are windows, and hopefully those windows will be white. Uh, now this decal uh, is meant to fold around the ship. So we have the center section, then one wall, and a second wall. So that is this center triangle here then the wall on this side and the wall on this side. So it looks like we're gonna lay it down and let it wrap around. Looks like the same thing on this piece. Um, it's gonna fit on the middle, then wrap around to the bottom. And lastly, this part here is just gonna lay on that one surface. 
So we're going to let our decals get wet. We're going to let them soak. We're also going to make sure just that our surface is nice and wet for those decals. Okay, and those are sliding very nicely. So we're going to try and line it up first, lay it down. We have a very clean brush here. All right, and those seem like good sturdy decals. They need just a little bit of repositioning here and they seem to be repositioning pretty well. Let's see if I can lift it up at all and get it scooted over. All right, that is a good, strong decal. No ripping, no tearing. And hopefully you can see, that is some good detail, nice windows. All right, this next one, looks like I'm gonna need a little bit of a cutout for the wire. that. Let it lay down. Reposition that for a minute. All right, we are just kind of positioning and flattening those decals with a Q-tip. The windows look good. The detail is very subtle. That is going to look good. Working on the nacelle decals now, and these are a lot like the ones here. Uh, the decal is going to have three sides. It's going to start here and wrap around the part. Just fantastic de detail on these. You just want to kind of lay it down in the middle, make sure you're kind of pulling it off in a straight fashion. Once again, still pretty repositionable. So you can make sure you're going nice and straight. Let's see if I can show you this here. Like on this decal, there is that white piping. So we can use that white piping to try and make sure everything is nice and lined up. And once you think you've got lined up well, you're just going to fold that decal over on both sides. Very strong decals. 
easy to reposition, make sure they're lined up well. Then just with the Q-tip, fold them over. All right, now we're going to start working on the saucer decals. And we do have some notes about that in the instructions. Um, you are actually supposed to cut the decals uh, so that they can wrap around this beveled edge. So you're just supposed to do some little slits uh, to kind of help it fold over and bend. Looks like around the inside ring. Uh, slits on this part and slits on this part. So we're going to do that. And we're just going to use kind of, I'm going to use some sharp scissors just to put some little slits in there. We're going to start on the back end. Seems to fold down pretty well. I just worry a little bit that maybe those slits will kind of compromise the decal so we try and reposition it, but so far it's going pretty well. Now I, if I seem like I'm in a bit of a rush doing these, I am a little bit. I'd like them all to be on and wet so that I can reposition them and make sure they line up well. I don't want to start on one side and have it dry and find out that that wasn't where I wanted it to be. So we're going to try and get all of it lined up all at once. So right there you can see this is what I'm talking about. We need to get these much closer together. So we, we can kind of talk all day about whether we like the idea of wallpaper decals or Aztec decals, but at least they're well done. Um, I, I think it's great on a kit kind of this size. I think it's a good way to get the level of detail that people want. Um, and really, I, I just like that if you're going to try and do something like these decals, at least do them like this, where they're strong, well detailed, repositionable. We're going to let that dry, we're going to get some microsol on it, and we'll take a look at it then. Here's one more interesting decal. Uh, this one. Uh, it goes down the spine of the ship and then these triangular parts on the side fall over to the other side. So the top part goes across there and this bottom part is going to fall down to fill in this part. So if you can tell there's a decal that ends right here and this space is still blank, that's what this decal is going to fill in. So this is another one where they tell you or recommend that you put in a few cuts. You put in a cut here, 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 and here. 
to help it lay flat against those shapes. All right, so we've got it lined up. Just want to make sure it's very even on the top and the bottom. Once we feel it's fairly positioned, bend that on down. Right. In addition to all the Aztec panel decals, there are the decals you can kind of see over here on the side that provide kind of these brown accents down the nacelles, these stripes that go across the hull, and some of these little panels that are kind of on the ship. So talking about these decals, I have to talk about two mistakes. One was a mistake I made. One is a mistake that round two has on the instructions. So the mistake I made is I should have read the instructions better. On the instructions where it talks about the decals, it will say apply these decals first, apply these decals last. And, and to me, I said, oh, I, I know what I'm doing. I know to put the panels down and put the registries on later. Um, so that's all I thought that was. I thought that was just a lay down the detailed panels, then put the registry names and pennants on afterwards. Um, but what it actually is, is these brown decals here, you are to put those, put those on first, and then put the Aztec panels on, on top of them. So they're less just a solid brown color, but let those kind of transparent Aztec decals provide some detail for those. So when you start working on this kit, read those instructions, take those five decals, put those on first. Um, and, and they spell it out. So that's all on me. Um, I, I thought they were just talking about putting the registries on second, so I kind of glossed over that. Uh, but the, the mistake that I have found um, on the decal instructions is there are some things that are reversed. So they say, they say that decal 47 um, goes over on this side, uh, but it really doesn't. Decal 47 does not line up properly here. If you line up this edge so that it's parallel like it should be, you can see it does not have the right angle to be on that side. Decal 47 goes over here. So you can see if you kind of, if you line this edge up parallel, that matches up. The other stripe, decal 51, you can see that they are suggesting 51 goes over on the other side. And once again, decal 51 does not line up properly on that side. Decal 51 lines up properly over here. Okay, once you get all those panels on, it's time to work on some of the registry decals. And they are tiny on this ship. I'm gonna see if I can get in close. And some of these we might not be able to focus on. Now back here on the back, we have a tiny USS Discovery 1031. On the nacelles, we do have a wonderful Starfleet Arrowhead. And on the back, we do have a tiny NCC 1031. And these guys are tiny. There's a penny. There's our decal. Now this one is so tiny, I could not tell which decal it was until I had it off the paper and I was putting it on. This 
is this tiny little decal right here. I, I picked the wrong one. I actually put on the NCC 1030, uh, which is the USS Glenn's registry. Um, but when I was looking at that, I could not tell which one it was. I used my best guess. There's the registry for the lower saucer. There's another tiny one that matches the one on the other side. Now that those registry decals are on, we are coming up at the very end of our build. One last little part here that I still have to put on. This is the sensor array that goes in front of the deflector dish. I've left this off just so it wouldn't get banged or broken. Uh, but now that we're coming up on the very end, it's time to put it right in that hole. Now we have the final touch, our discovery registry. I'm going to put on this last decal, then we'll let that decal dry and wrap up this build with some pros and cons and our final thoughts about the model. Here we are. This is the completed model kit by Polar Lights, the USS Discovery in 1 hundredths scale. It's been a very fun build, and I think this is a great model kit. Um, if we're going over pros and cons of this model kit, the first pro that we have is this is accurate. This is the USS Discovery as she's presented in the TV show. Now, some people might say, hey, that ship's nacelles are too long. They might not look how flat it is. Uh, but as far as the model kit goes, this is what is showing up on our TV screens every week. So we got to give them that. Um, whether you like the ship or not, this model kit is accurate. And I, I think the level of detail is absolutely a pro for this. So the detail that they could mold in, they mold it in. It's not all done with decals. So if you look here, you will see these little indentations are all molded in. These stripes are molded in. Um, looking down the nacelles, you'll see these panel lines are all molded into the ship. Now the things that they could not do by molding it in um, and having it be in scale, they have done with decals. So you can see the windows along that saucer. You can see the windows along the neck of the ship. You can see windows along the bottom, all done with decals. Even looking kind of up into the middle of that disc, you can see there are windows represented there. So the things that they couldn't represent by molding it, they represent with decals. Um, so the detail is a pro, the accuracy is a pro, and the fit is definitely a pro. For being a snap kit, um, it fits wonderfully well together. And it, it really does have some tight tolerances. Back here on the nacelle, sandwiching in that clear part in between the two opaque parts, that's a great fit. Um, the only gaps, which I pointed out early in the video, was right here on the nacelles. So maybe take away a point in fit for that. Um, but overall, everything else really does come together very closely. That's the seam right there, and it kind of just ends up looking like a panel line. Uh, so fit is great. Um, as far as cons... Man, the Aztec decals, it's a love-hate thing. It's a big pro to have the Aztec decals to give you all those great panel lines. Um, it's also a con because they, they can be kind of hard to work with sometimes. You do get a few wrinkles. And there's some of the things that I think I would have had more fun painting 
Um, and if this wasn't a review where I want to show all the decals, I probably would have painted these parts myself, um, slightly make those a lighter color, do a lot of the brown striping here. I would have liked to have paint those instead of doing those as decals. Um, so the Aztec decals are a pro and a con. Um, just no matter how well you work with them, you will every you will get a few wrinkles um, in those decals, and you'll get a few places where try as I might, I just could not get them to line up. I I think once the solvents that started acting on it, it started pulling each of these in different directions. So you can see a little wrinkle. And you can see my silver does not match up all the way around the circle. Um, the biggest con is I'd love a bigger version of this model. I, I would love a 1 1400th version um, or even a 1000th um, scale model kit of this. There is so much detail. There was so much that you look at it. You'd love to light all the windows. You'd love to light all the beacons. You'd love to just paint some of these real intricate patterns um, that are done as decals on this. So I would love a bigger version. Um, but for being the smaller size, Polar Lights really did go out of their way to make a great kit. Uh, the, providing those decals is wonderful. Providing the clear parts um, is of course something I love. Um, I love that they went out of their way. They haven't done that on the other 2500 scale ships to to really provide us with some clear parts. And you know those clear parts are really a great way for you to be able to make the model your own um, and do some other things with it uh, like how we lit it in this build. So let's take a look at those lights. All right, and here is our ship lit up. So we've lit the warp nacelles, we've lit the engines, we've lit the bridge dome, we've lit the deflector. And it, it's great to be able to do things like that to make your model different than what everybody else is doing. Um, I think it was great that Polar Lights gave us those clear parts. I think the kit was wonderfully engineered to kind of lend itself to doing some adjustments like this. But you know, even if you're not going to light it, those clear parts are great because you can paint that blue and get at least a blue layer there sandwiched in between the top and the bottom of the nacelle. There's our lit bridge dome. It's a bridge and all of its detail. Those clear parts for the front of the warp nacelle really are great just giving us those three spots of blue light the clear part around the side to be lit up you know i i really think the hobby of modeling is great uh, because people can take the same kit and just go in a dozen different ways so I'm excited to see how other people build this. I'm excited to see people um, really open it up and do more lighting or less lighting. I'm excited to see people paint it instead of the Aztec decals. Um, I think it's a great model kit to really just open things up for people to build this their way and upgrade it if they want to or build it in a simple fashion if they want to. Thank you guys for following my build. Thank you for following our channel. Um, I'd love to hear your comments on the build down below. I'd love to see your builds. Um, thank you guys very, very much. As we finish up here, we're just going to show some still shots of the model in all of its wonderful detail.